Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the Ultra Act Ultraman Zero Renewal. A fan favorite Ultra with a ton of moves and abilities, it naturally lends itself to an awesome action figure. Or does it? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. The best quality of Zero would be the sculpt and the paint. Honestly, the only issues I have in this department would be small, and you would have to be handling Zero to really notice them. Overall, Bandai did a nice job on the son of Ultra 7. Starting with the head, the silver paint looks great, and the green on the forehead is applied as neatly as it can be. The translucent eyes look nice too. The only gripes are that there are some notable mold lines on the head, and the silver paint on the neck doesn't look like it's applied too neatly. This is a common theme throughout the figure, where you'll see sculpt marks for the paint, but it'll only be slightly outside of the sculpt marks, or they'll miss the sculpt mark a little bit. The chest and the shoulder armor look nice, but the matte paint used on some of the parts sort of clashes with the metallic silver surrounding it, and in some spots it looks a bit chalky. As you can see, I'm referring to the indented parts of the armor. The midsection of Zero, where again the painting outside of the sculpt mark thing is noticeable. Here's a look at Zero's legs. And finally, a close-up look of Zero's back, including his ultra booty. So all in all, like I said, he looks pretty good. And for some, looks are about all this figure is going to have. Now, Super Awesome Ultraman Zero's articulation is really great, actually, in most areas. However, there are a few areas which are either lacking or varies wildly from figure to figure. So to begin, Zero's head is attached to his neck on a ball joint, and the neck is attached into the body by the shoulders on a ball joint. So you can see you can get Zero's head to look around. Pretty cool. However, I do find moving the head left and right to be a bit of a pain, because maybe it's just the way the sculpt back here collides in with the rest of the body, but uh, I don't know. Could be a little bit better. Shoulders, typical Ultra Act style. Ball joint connected into the body and then a hinge in the actual shoulder itself. Now you may notice that the shoulder armor here sort of blocks Zero's arms from moving up. Luckily there is an accessory piece which remedies this. Moving on down we have the typical double hinged elbows as you can see here. Wrist, swivel hinge combo, what you would normally expect out of an Ultra Act, and the hands are attached to the wrists on a ball joint, but uh, you only really get a swivel movement out of it because the hands are so large, and as you'll see in the next section, the connection is very tight. Moving to the main body, we have an ab crunch, which is on a ball joint. Spin zero all the way around, and this is rather loose on mine. As you can see, I'm moving this no problem here. The waist, ball joint, but it is rather stiff on mine. You can hear the plastic creaking around. Yeah, not too much fun there. Now the hips, typical pull-down hinge, as you can see here, found on Ultra Axe. Now, this is where it varies from figure to figure, wildly. So, as you know, thighs are attached to the hips on a ball joint, and mine, they're pretty easy to move. However, I have seen some where the person will just shake the figure like this, and the leg goes all wobbly-bobbly. You may see that in Boats Can Fly's review. Now, the ball joint is attached into the thigh on a swivel, so you can move the leg around like so. Knees, double hinge. You can see their peanut knees. Moving down, the ankles are on the same style of joint that the wrists are. And you can get ankle rocker movement out of there. Like so. Then finally, the toe joint is on a hinge, which has great movement up and down. So this way you can put zero in a ton of poses. Now, holy mother of pearl, does zero come with a ton of accessories. Now, first off, for the accessories, I want to talk about Zero's hands. And the reason why I'm keeping them in the tray is, as you can see here, he comes with so many of them, I would probably lose them if I took them all out at once. Now, first off, we have splayed hands here. Then we have some karate chopping hands. Then down here, we have different expression hands, so this way you can have Zero pointing or something else. And then we have three different types of somewhat closed hands, so this way he can hold all the different effect parts and accessories he comes with more effectively. Now, swapping out the hands, you have to be very careful. Now, if you're wondering why I'm saying you have to be very careful, just listen in here. So, to pop the hand off, grab Zero's forearm, grab the hand, 
I'm gonna gorilla grip this and I'm ham handing it. Don't do this, be a little bit more gentle and you just have to pop the hand off like that. I'm sure you heard a satisfying pop. It's because these hands are a very, very tight fit and as you can see, the ball joint for the wrist goes deep in the hand. Be careful because if you pull too hard, you might ham hand it. If hands don't want to go on or come off easily, heat up the hand, then pop them on. And then obviously to attach a new hand, you do the same thing, hold on to Zero's forearm, apply pressure to the hand, ah, there you go. Now you can swap out Zero's hands and he's a bit more expressive. Now, Zero comes with a lot of accessories which uses the Zero sluggers on his head. Instead of following in Seven's footsteps by making them removable, they decided to give Zero an alternate head without the sluggers on it. Now, you think that that's pretty cool because it looks exactly like this head without the sluggers and it's sculpted correctly and there's no hole in there, so this way you can tell that it was removed. However, if you thought the wrists were a pain, just imagine how much this is going to be considering it's a ball joint for the head. So here's what you do. To swap them out, you got to grab Zero's head, like so. Pop it off, just like that. Now's a fun game, sticking it in the hole. See, that didn't even do it. So I'm gonna fiddle with this for a little bit. And I finally got it on after about uh, two or three minutes or so of lining it up correctly. So, now that I've got this head on, what exactly does he come with for the Zero Sluggers? Well, before we get to that, let's actually address the articulation issues that Zero has with moving his arms up, like so. You get alternate sets of chest armor pieces. You can see I already put this one on. And swapping these out is extremely easy to do. It's probably the easiest thing about Zero. All you have to do is just stick your nail underneath there, and they pop out so easily. The only problem is, is that looking at them, it may be confusing to see which way they go on. But all you got to do is just figure out where the holes line up with the pegs, pop them in, and there you go. Now Zero can easily stick his arms above his head. Whee! So the first weapon I want to talk about is the Zero Twin Sword here. Nice and silver, sculpted well, you can see all the details on it. <sighs> but it's a pain, because as you can already sort of see, the paint is scraping off. Why? Well, it's simple. You gotta slide it into this hand here. Hmm. Um, the hand is made of a hard plastic, and it doesn't like to cooperate. To get Zero to wield this, which I really don't know if you would want to display it that way because it's big, it may cause Zero to tip over. First, take the hand. Try to finagle with it and get the handle into the hand. This is if you want to do it the hard way. Like so. And then slip it in like that. It's a very, very, very tight fit, and if you slide it up and down, mine's already scratched, so I'm not too concerned with it, you're gonna scrape off the paint. Now the reason why I say to do this before attaching the hand to zero is that, well, attaching the hand is hard, and if you have the hand already attached, you may force something and, you know, snap a joint. So then from there, all you have to do is pop the hand onto the wrist, and now zero is ready to slice up some bad guys. Now that we got that bitch of an accessory out of the way, we're going to move on to some of the easier ones. For an example, the Zero Sluggers. You actually get two individually sculpted ones, which you have to finagle into Zero's open hand, just like so. And voila. For both hands. Piece just fell off of them, which I'll explain later. Now, you can slice up some kaiju or other enemies. But luckily, that's not all. Because we get these really neat Zero Slugger effect parts in a different set entirely. So if you want a little bit more, I guess you could say fancy display, you have that option. Now, you may have noticed the way that I slid the Zero Slugger into the hands and that you see that there's this little tip over here that had to go into the hand first. Let me show you an awful design flaw with this. First and foremost, what you're doing, if you're not going to use a hair dryer, which I highly recommend for this, you have to slide them in just like this. The one with the effect part. And as you can see, 
that is a very, very flimsy connection, and chances are you may snap this if you're ham-handing it. But look a little closer. Do you notice something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this part right here on the slugger has an edge to it. And if you look at the hand, right there where the tip is pointing, you can see that it's actually grinding away at the plastic, causing an indent in the hand. And you can see there's a little bit of paint scrape on the slugger itself. So if you don't use a blow dryer for this to heat up the hand, over time, you're just going to carve a little bit of an indent in there, which will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this way, eventually, you're just going to be able to slide this in no problem. That's total sarcasm there because you shouldn't have to damage a figure, so this way you can put on an accessory easier. Way to go. Now I want to talk about the color timer because you get a few different option parts with zero here. First up, you get a red color timer, and all you have to do to swap them out is just pop the first color timer out like that. It's so easy that it just falls like that. You reveal a screw on the inside, and then line up the red color timer with the old blue one, and there you go. Now, you also get one which involves the zero slugger, so this way you can use the zero twin shot. And to attach that, all you have to do Let's pull the color timer out. It just falls out like that. It's so easy to do. And then you just take the zero twin shot accessory and plug it in. And there you go. Now you can pretend that Zero's firing a beam from his chest. This is the only zero slugger accessory which doesn't run the risk of you damaging your figure. Yay! Now the part that just decided to fall off of Zero in the earlier section that you saw was this little piece of plastic on the back which just plugs in like that. Yeah, it comes out really, really easy. And the reason why that comes out is you get this little adapter for a stage act support system. There you go. All you do is you plug the arm in there and you don't necessarily need a claw. However, it's not a good fit. Now the final accessory, which will come with zero or the standard accessories, we get this zero wide shot here. It is molded in an orange and yellow translucent plastic, which is pretty cool. And one of the chopping hands is molded into this. It's a nice burst from it, from Zero's forearm and the hand. However, um, it's kind of just a little burst. It's not very long like some of the others. I mean, it looks intense, but um, can we get some uh, Zero enhancement pills for this, please? Anyway, popping this on, it's about as much of a nightmare as you expect. Because you got the hand here and you got to line up like this and you got to push, and you just got to pray to whatever ultra god you believe in that something doesn't snap. See, that didn't even work. Please don't, please don't, not on camera. Okay, there we go. And then you just got to line it up. Oh, see there? <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. So let's line them up. Let's use this arm for support. Might not necessarily be show accurate, but that's okay. There we go. Now, those are all the accessories which normally come with zero. And pretty much all of them, you run the risk of breaking the figure. Now, if you get the first production run of this figure, which at this time there have been no reissues of this, so don't worry, all of the zeros that you buy <laughs> will come with this next accessory, so you don't have to worry about missing out on this wonderful piece. And the effect part that I was trying to describe, which only comes with the first release of Ultraman Zero, without losing my shit, was the Zero Double Flasher, as you can see here. It's made mostly of a red or pink translucent plastic with some green beams wrapped around it. And this is very nicely done, and it's actually quite hefty. You can hear it. It's pretty solid. Um, so how do you use this? Well, first and foremost, there is a hole for a stage act support arm here. <sighs> And you have to plug in Zero's hands here and here. And normally you would plug in Leo's hands back here because they fit into the pre-sculpted slots. But unfortunately, I don't have Leo. Fortunately, this seems to work with any other Ultra as a substitute. So if you don't have Leo, you're still in luck. And because it's fun to do things on camera, let's try it out. So first what you have to do is just... First, what you have to do is just plug in his hands. Oh. Like so, without breaking it. 
Oh, oh, I got it in. I got it in. Um, I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to do this off camera. So after fighting with it for a little bit, here's how you actually display zero firing off the effect. And like I said, you can use any other ultra as a substitute because the slots in the effect work with any small ball joint you would use for ultra act wrists. So those are all the effects that zero come with, though there are plenty. Um, safe to say, pain in the ass. Now moving to sizing, as you can see here, zero is the same size as your other standard six inch ultras in this line. First up, here he is alongside some of NECA's Pacific Rim figures. Now some SH Monster Arts figures. Some Ultra Act Kaiju. And finally, alongside some other Ultras. So, like I said, your standard Ultra Act Ultra scale. So, buy Zero now, skip him, or look for a deal. Zero looks really nice, with only a few minor paint flaws you'll see up close. The articulation is good, however, it won't hold up for long. The legs on mine, since recording the articulation section, have gotten loose, and I've had reports from other collectors that the joints loosen up over time. Take Boats Can Fly for an example. His zero, well, the legs are very, very loosey-goosey. The accessories, while great in number, giving zero nearly limitless display options, are a royal pain in that you fear you're gonna snap something whenever you swap something out. Note this can be slightly cured by heating up some of the hands to soften them so this way you don't snap the hands or the zero slugger parts, but they're just designed in a frustrating way. Fans of zero will be happy to get this renewal, but chances are they will be frustrated. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand I could have gotten a bad one from the bunch, but considering the figure retailed for about $45 and was delayed a month from release, presumably to, you know, tighten up the quality control, it's kind of crappy collectors will have to deal with this possibility. At the time of this review, he's going for about 7,500 yen in the secondhand market. If you can get it for about 40 bucks shipped, you're paying top dollar. To be honest, I'm glad I got mine for $15. Don't get me wrong, the overall package is very cool, and this sounds fantastic on paper. However, I do feel this is a case where Bandai decided to pack a lot of stuff in on the figure, but not actually think about the practicality of it in making sure that everything worked right. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and be sure to give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. If you'd like to view some of my other videos, go ahead and click on the pictures in this video, and you'll be taken right to them. I've hand-selected them just for you. Be sure to check the description for both more information and some links to help me out, including a link to my Patreon. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.